Hey, I'm Rob from Producer Tech, and welcome to this month's feature, which is on Novation's Launch Key Controller Keyboard. I've been keen to check this one out, not just because it's one of the prizes in our Meet KT Remix competition that's running at the moment, but also because it's the first Novation keyboard that works with both music software on your computer and also dedicated Novation iPad apps. So I'm interested to see how it fares in both of these areas. When using the keyboard with a computer, it simply connects to it over USB as normal, which not only allows it to interface with the computer, but also powers it too. Using the keyboard with an iPad is done by using the same USB cable, only connecting it to a USB adapter for the iPad, like you get in camera connection kits. I'm glad to be finally putting mine to use. Let's take a look at the iPad apps first then, Launch Key and Launch Pad, which are both free downloads that you can get from the App Store. Launch Key is a pretty comprehensive synthesizer app, which allows you to create different melodic parts by playing them with the keys. You can choose from one of 60 different sounds, all separated into different categories like arpeggiated, bass, lead, and so on. After which you can edit the sound using the knobs on the screen or the controller keyboard, which adjust key synth parameters like the filter cutoff, levels of oscillators, envelope settings, and effects amounts. Another way of adjusting the patch parameters is using the pads, which allow you to jump between the funky looking nodes on the iPad display. These are a particular combination of synth parameter settings that create a totally different sound for the preset. So it shows you how much of a difference the various parameters can make. You can also switch between these nodes by touching them on the iPad. And blend from one to the next by dragging your finger between them. And you can move the nodes around by dragging the edges. There's also a built-in arpeggiator, allowing you to create rhythmic patterns for each patch, which can be turned on and off using the play and stop buttons. And latched using the loop button. And the keyboard works exactly as it does in all other applications, with you being able to transpose it up or down the MIDI note range, either in octaves, or semitones, which you access by pressing both octave buttons at the same time. Although there are limited controls to edit here, with just eight knobs, there's still quite a lot you can do with each patch. And one thing I thought was cool is that the sliders on the keyboard can be used to edit the amplitude and filter envelopes. So you get more advanced control of patches with the Launch Key keyboard, as well as being able to tweak and play sounds more easily with a physical device of course. For the first time, I found a keyboard was turning my iPad into a real instrument, that I could not only mess around with at home, but also see being a potential instrument that someone might jam with in a band. Let's take a look at Launchpad now, which is a really fun app. For anyone who's familiar with the grid in Ableton, then this is essentially a cut down version of that. Here's how it works. The grid has eight vertical tracks, which can play one audio sample at a time. This can be a continuous loop, as in the drums on the first track here. To switch to a different loop, you just hit one of the other ones on the track, after which it switches at the start of the next bar. or they can be single hits, which only sound whilst you hold the pad down, like these FX on the last track. Whilst in sample mode, you can see the names of the samples on the tracks. And in trigger mode, you can see whether it's a loop or a single hit, and also how long each loop is.
triggering any of these samples can be done using the pads on the keyboard of course, with the two currently active rows shown by the red lights to the left in the app. To change to a different row, you can use the arrow buttons to the right to shift up and down. Then pressing the red button switches the pads to FX mode, where the lower row can then be used to apply different rhythmic filter effects to the master output. And the upper row is a beat repeat effect. Changing sounds can be done by entering edit mode, which allows you to then choose from an extensive range of samples from the immense Loop Masters library, all categorized into different groups. And you can also change the action of the pad using the trigger display's edit mode to make it a single hit rather than a looped sample. The knobs above control the filtering of each track. Whilst the sliders are on track levels. So there's a lot that can be done with this app, and I had some serious fun playing with both apps together too, after I realised that was possible. Obviously, the keyboard does draw a fair bit of power from the iPad and so wears the battery down a bit faster, and did cause the occasional issue on my ancient iPad Mark I. But the situation was easily remedied with a 12 volt center pin positive power supply, which is pretty standard these days for most controllers or hard drives, so it's likely the majority of people will have one lying around if they need it. So now let's check out some music software on my computer, starting with Ableton Live, which I would expect the keyboard to have the best integration with based on Novation's previous track record, and I wasn't disappointed. The keyboard has pretty extensive control of the mixer, devices, and session view grid. The buttons to the left allow you to switch to different tracks, so you can change the instrument you're playing or the effect you're controlling. And the pads can be used to trigger clips in the grid above. with the up and down arrow buttons moving to a different scene or row of clips, and then the upper button to the right of the pads triggering it. Then the lower button stops all clips. The mixer controls work nicely as you'd expect, with levels on the faders, mutes below, and then the button at the end switching the mutes to solos. And a great thing here is that any of the groups of assignable controls can be toggled between this automatic in control mode and a standard controller mode, using the buttons in the centre, after which they then become freely assignable MIDI controls for using as you like. So you have the option of creating your own hybrid setup. Also, switching the pads in control mode off means they then become MIDI notes, so can be used to play drum racks. With in control mode active, the knobs on launch key control the currently selected device. And pickup mode works across the board, so you can switch freely between tracks and devices without totally messing up your settings. Switching over to Reason now, LaunchKey has a separate installer and user guide for this software, so they've spent some time making sure the integration is good. Primarily, it's a device controller, and a good one at that, 
having assignments for all of the instruments and effects. As with any control surface in Reason, when a device's track is selected, which can be done remotely using launch keys track up and down buttons again, the controller's sliders, knobs and buttons automatically map to that device. All the controls work in pickup mode again and are mapped out logically and consistently. So you always know instantly where your filter, envelope and LFO controls are, for example. If you want to control the mixer, you can lock the keyboard to it by right-clicking on the master channel and choosing that option, after which its controls can be used to adjust levels and solo and mute tracks, whilst the keyboard keys still control the instruments selected in the sequencer section below. Or you can use remote overrides as another option, of course, if you want to just assign one or two mixer controls throughout, but still use the rest of the keyboard for the selected device. And lastly, controlling logic simply gives you automatic mixer control, rather than device control. As in the other software, you can step up and down through tracks, allowing you to choose which one you play with the keyboard. Whilst the controls above mute and solo parts, adjust volumes, and so on. But pickup mode doesn't seem to be implemented right now, so it's not ideal for a mix down situation. However, for jamming and creating a track, or performing even, you could find it a pretty useful little control surface. In summary then, Launch Key is a great bit of kit, and certainly the first of its kind from Novation, featuring both iPad compatibility and a software control system other than Automap. Despite being aimed more at the consumer end of the market, which it does very well at, with clear setup instructions and a somewhat simpler functionality than previous keyboards, it's also got a good range of controls, nice software integration, particularly with Live and Reason of the ones that I tested, and the ability to run in hybrid mode. So there's definitely plenty for a more experienced user too. I found it to be a very versatile keyboard, which I could see being equally at home with someone just starting out, as in the studio with a seasoned producer. So you could say there's something for everyone. See you next time.